Okay, um, well, let's start. Um, hello again, and welcome to this Oasis Ruby webinar. Um, my name is Norbert Kovac. I'm one of the Oasis BDMs looking after the geotechnical sales. Um, just a few general notes before we start. Um, you will be muted during the presentation. However, we will shortly enable the chat so you can put in all your questions that you have, um, and these will be answered at the end where we have a Q&A uh, a session. Today's presenters are our product manager, Raul pa uh, Perulero Serrano, and our application specialist, Cecilia Pereira. And we also have uh, Vikram Gadikarla, um, our senior engineer and developer, and Carol Matthews as the head of geotechnical software. Um, they are going to be answering uh, some of the questions. And with that, I'm going to hand over to Cicero and she will start the webinar. Hello everyone, thanks for joining this webinar today. I am Shishira, Application Specialist for the OSS Geotechnical Suite of Software at Arup. In today's webinar, we cover FRU. FRU is a program which analyzes flexible retaining walls such as diaphragm walls and sheet pile walls. This webinar will include two parts, the PowerPoint presentation through which I will explain what FRU is, what it can do, how it works, and some of the theory behind it with the analysis methods. However, a major part of this presentation uh, would be a live demonstration of the software by my colleague Raul, who will take you step by step through FRU. He will show you how to analyze stability and full soil structure interaction analysis he will be using the modeling wizard to set up our quick analysis. Also useful shortcuts and tips to enable proficient modeling. And also simple checks that the user can utilize to analyze the outputs. There are other advanced features of FRU, uh, which will be covered in other webinars, uh, which are advanced analysis methods like integral bridge analysis methods and also how to use EC7 design methods. Starting off, let us see what FRU can do as a software. FRU can analyze embedded retaining walls over the complete construction sequence. It can calculate shear forces, bending moments, displacements, etc. It can carry out stability checks using the limit equilibrium uh, methods, that is, limiting active and passive states on either side of the wall for cantilever as well as propped walls. FRU can also calculate earth and water pressure at each construction stage if need be. And as mentioned before, it can be used for analyzing any type of walls like sheet pile, secant walls, contiguous or diaphragm walls. The type of wall is accounted for by changing the stiffness of the wall through the input gateway in FRU. Now, FRU was originally developed by a research work based on a paper named Numerical Analysis by flexible, of Flexible Retaining Walls uh, by Papin et al., which was published a number of years back. However, the current version, FRU 20.0 Build 10, is quite different from the original one. It is much more advanced and has quite a number of extra and useful features which you can see in our live demonstration. It also has our brand new ribbon interface, which is convenient and user friendly. In terms of analysis methods, FRU models the wall as a series of elastic beam elements joined at the nodes. The lowest node is either the base of the wall or at a prescribed rigid base in the ground beneath the wall. This rigid base is usually the level at which we expect to encounter very hard formation. There is also a vertical rigid boundary setting, which is usually set to a reasonably far distance away. However, if shaft analysis is required, you can choose the center line and keep the vertical boundaries closer to match your shaft diameter. The vertical rigid boundary setting 
does provide possibility for axisymmetric analysis. However, the results need to be validated by FE analysis. The wall can be started either from the EGL or at any depth below the existing ground level. The soil to each side of the wall are connected to the nodes through springs. And we assume that only horizontal forces are being transmitted onto the wall. For calculating soil stiffness, two methods are available in FRU, the finite element method and the Mindlin method. FRU develops soil response stiffness matrices by calculating how applied loads at the edge of finite element meshes affect the stiffness of the soil. Both the methods are similar, but it is worth having a look at the explanations in the user manual of FRU to choose which one will be applicable for your specific model. Now we are often asked how FRU works and how conservative the results are. Because there are many assumptions in FRU, like it is assumed uh, the simplifying the likely effects of wall friction, and it simplifies the action of the structural supports in it that it is assuming that the supports act at the nodes only, and also we assume a linear elastic behavior of soil stiffness. But a number of comparisons have been done over the years with experimental as well as actual site measurements, and the results were found to compare very well. There are available literature like Syria C580 and Syria C760, as well as a paper, a technical paper by Roscoe in CTRL contract 430 Ashford Tunnels, where he explains how the estimated values from FRU matched the values he got by empirical and experimental methods. There is also a case study presented on our website which shows the Hong Kong cut and cover tunnels and it illustrates how closely FRU predictions can match the site readings. We will now go through different inputs that are required for building a model in FRU. The Parameters are the soil strength and stiffness, both the short term and the long term will have to be known. Also, you should have a good idea of the groundwater level and the water pressures that you will encounter at site. Also, the wall stiffness, what type of wall you're using, short term and long term wall stiffnesses. The support stiffnesses, what type of support are you going to use? Are you going to use props, anchors, berms or slabs? And also the surcharge and applied loads, if any. The input wizard in FRU enables quick generation of complex staged construction sequences, including modeling of props and changes in water levels. Once the parameters are decided, you will also need to plan your geometry in advance. By geometry, we mean the soil levels, the dig levels and the prop positions will have to be decided beforehand. Now, the dis this decision may depend upon the design approach that you will select also. You will also need to select whether automatic or manual node generation you're going for. If you are using automatic node generation, then you do not have to worry about the position of the nodes as FRU will do automatically for you. But if you wish to use manual node generation, there are some important points to be kept in mind. It's that the props and the loads are usually applied at nodes. And the soil switches mid node. The fill and excavations are at mid nodes and the toe of the wall extends halfway between consecutive nodes. Now, if we are going to manually input the nodes, please do remember to keep the nodes approximately equally spaced and place the nodes below the wall. Also, if you think passive, gener passive softening of soil may be applicable to your site, please be aware of it and specify it through the analysis data at appropriate stage. Let us now see some features which make FRU a good choice for your flexible retaining wall analysis. There is, of course, the new ribbon interface which is user friendly, the customizable property panes which you can place at whichever location you need while doing your analysis. 
Then there is our model wizard, which helps you set up the problem very easily. There is data entry by levels, much easier than entering by nodes. You can also choose whether to, uh, whether for automatic or manual node degeneration. It includes the limit equilibrium stability checks. Also, the tow depth can be calculated for all the construction stages, and you can see which is the minimum tow depth. There is batch testing, which is a useful feature in FRU. For example, if you already know the tow level, but you want to check what would be the analysis if the tow was a bit, little bit longer or shorter. In FRU, if you select the option for overriding the calculated tow level and then specify the range of tow levels you need, FRU automatically generates multiple FRU files. You can then study or analyze the different tow conditions. FRU 20.0 supports JSON file format. It is COM automation ready for richer and more efficient workflows. And also FRU allows you to apply partial factor calculations in Eurocode 7, ASH2, Syria, or also use custom combinations if required. Once the model is set up and analysis is run, graphical and tabular outputs can be generated. You can print out the graphical outputs for one stage or for an envelope of results. For example, if there are many stages and you need to know the worst case of displacement, so you can print the displacement for all the stages and see for yourself which is the worst case. In case you need to analyze the results more, you can also export it to Excel. You can copy the images, you can print PDF, and you can manipulate and, and you can use the results for further analysis. Pro allows different modeling methods as well. Effects like undrained drain transition using poor water pressure adjustment and different types of props and struts, wall relaxation and creep, sloping ground behind the wall and berms in front of the wall, thermal effects in, in, in including integral bridge analysis and also seismic and cyclic loading. I have just listed them for you. Detailed videos are available with us and they are also explained in our manual. Do get in touch with us if you need any help. To summarize, FRU can analyze the wall and ground conditions throughout the excavation and construction stages in the long term, the final condition also. It can check the horizontal equilibrium failure modes both in fixed as well as free earth rotation. So now with that, I now invite my colleague Raul to demonstrate our brand new FRU 20.0 through an example and also a case study. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Cicera, and good afternoon, everyone. Let me just uh, swap presentation so I can carry on. Me. So uh, now I will walk you through uh, the steps to set up a, a FRU model from scratch, a simple ish model, and then including uh, the parameter input, uh, running the analysis, then uh, checking on, on the outputs. And uh, along the way, I will be dropping some tips and shortcuts that might be of use for those who are not so familiar with FRU and also for those pro users alike. As I have discovered some of those uh, pearls myself recently, I'm getting more familiar with the software uh, after a few years being a, a user on the other side. And then, yes, uh, without further ado, uh, let's go. So this is a synthetic model uh, where we are going uh, to be exploring. A, it's a, going to be a construction uh, sequence. Uh, um, we are seeing on the left hand side uh, the initial condition where we've got a, a couple of materials. So um, Quite typical in the in the northern areas in in, in the UK, uh, we've got some glacial till uh, in in drain state, also uh, overlying uh, fluvio fluvio glacial sands, and then we are going to be installing the wall, putting some uh, surcharge loading at the on the active side, and then some temporary excavation with uh, temporary uh, props. Then we will proceed with a full excavation and then substituting uh, the temporary props by permanent props. 
and then uh, the modeling also the effect of the extra weight of the permanent structure of this uh, potential basement uh, on top of the of the passive site. And then in the last stage, we are also going to include some um, effects or on the structural elements of relaxation and, and, and reduced stiffness uh, in, in the longer run. And then also with uh, reduced water levels, uh, as we can see on, on the right hand side uh, in the in the passive wedge. So I'm just going to switch now to the model itself. It's time to get making. So I'm going to share my screen. And we are going, first of all, going to open a, a new through instance. And we are here presented uh, with the welcome screen. And we've got an option to show this every time we are opening the model. We also have a useful uh, about button in here where we can check for updates, uh, which can um, happen uh, th throughout the different cycles of, of maintenance. And we are currently on the latest uh, build version, which is number 10 of 20.0, uh, which was released last week. So we are going to create a new file by selecting that option. It's uh, we can here introduce a job number uh, where uh, the engineer initials uh, in charge of that model and some useful information uh, like the what's the job title subtitle and the headings and modeling notes and that's for good practice for those who are familiar with modeling processes this is very useful to always know what you've been changing especially when you've been doing for example sensitivity analysis we can do a quick check on the units if you're happy with this the units are going to be displayed throughout your analysis uh, or you can reset them to System International, uh, but uh, I'm going to keep it on, on on this combination in here. And the next thing we do is to uh, set up the basic geometry of our model. In that particular scenario that I've just depicted earlier, uh, we are going to have the existing ground level at 50 meters uh, above ordnance datum, for example, uh, with a rigid boundary at 28 meters. We've got the possibility of adding the materials in here, but I'm just going to skip that now uh, and, and we'll see that later. We can check between stability checks only or stage construction. We are going to go for the latter. Uh, the gen node generation, we are going to keep it as manual in the specific case, and the toe level of the wall is going to be set at 32 meter OD. Then here we can select the different analysis types and also the soil interface um, between if it's free or fixed as a, as a choice, how the soil stiffness is going to be um, calculated and recognized by, by FRU, uh, if we are to redistribute or not the pressures on both sides of the wall and uh, where the boundaries uh, are going to be left. We leave these as they are, as it is now. And here we also have, uh, just before we close the, the, the model wizard, we've got the chance to introduce the initial layer materials on both sides of the wall. And I'll be doing that in a second. So for uh, good housekeeping, it's always good practice to save our model uh, regularly to avoid the disappointment uh, and losing um, uh, the good effort we've been putting in. So I'm just going to save it with a different name in there. We can just carry on from here. So first of all, uh, just to bring attention to the yeah, the the new the new ribbon interface uh, from a couple of maintenance releases uh, that occurred earlier in the year. Uh, also, we uh, we we've brought back the development team have brought back the uh, generation of the nodes in here, which we are not going to be using at the moment because this has to do with the, the automatic generation of the nodes uh, and. It's uh, that's we've been listening to to, to the feedback uh, provided from from our users, which is always very beneficial and, and always uh, we, we try to accommodate where possible uh, some of the requests after the thorough discussion, obviously. And we here what we do is going to see that uh, the gateway uh, and on the in terms of the flexibility of where we can accommodate, so you can see it can be locked in different positions. Uh, 
my my personal preference is to keep it on the left hand side uh, where we can see the different the the workflow as we are going to be populating the different instances uh, to build up our our model uh, then also we have here the titles and the unit spans uh, as you can see they appear on the right hand side they can be moved around like the gateway they can be locked in different positions as well and again my personal preference is to keep it on the right hand side and then what we are going to be looking at is to create now the different inputs. So the specification, uh, we just make sure that uh, we've got this stage construction with a manual override. Here we will be able to click on the stability checks uh, to make sure that the wall is stable at the different stages of our construction. In here, we have the opportunity to introduce what uh, selection of partial factors in our model we want to be using and use direct KPI in this case. And if we want to compare against an unfactor analysis and we just apply, we've got um, just a, a, a little warning here in which we are changing the, the code and just to acknowledge that change. And then we can close that. So uh, one of those little uh, pearls that I've um, you found um, recently is that clicking and um, just pointing in that there, clicking and then dragging down with your mouse, we can keep track of the different tabs. We can do that with any of the tabs that are available or that we've been, have been using in here. And this is a way that we can keep tabs on that, uh, on the graphical input of our model that we are doing the right thing as, uh, as we are expecting. So, Yes, without further ado, I'm just going to start bringing in from uh, uh, an Excel file I'm just going to show in here uh, uh, where I've got declared uh, the various inputs. This is very, very useful. So uh, knowing beforehand uh, what to expect and then uh, just bring them in uh, saves a lot of time. So highly recommend that. We are going to start with our um, our materials as per um, the logical input in in our gateway. So here we have we we can reduce um, as you can see the table um, might take a bit bigger in our in our screen. So I can reduce a bit on the gateway and then uh, by pressing down control and then scrolling with your mouse you can make as bigger or as little uh, the input here. So just to uh, allow for the full visualization of the table. So I just simply copy and paste uh, the different materials on the table and that's uh, that's the first thing we do. Then we are going to introduce uh, in uh, we can see that it's about the stiffnesses, the K naught values, unit weights, all the typical parameters of um, the wall stability calculations um, and, and then the, the wall analysis um, in in this scenario. Note levels. So in here uh, we see the different levels where we are going to be inputting and then what materials we are uh, going to be representing on each side of the wall. And again, it's as simple as just copy pasting from from a, or from a list that we can preempt it uh, manually. And then we just bring it in and voila, we've got on the right hand side uh, our existing ground level at 50 meters with our uh, glacial till overlying um, the sandy material we've got at the bottom. And then we will build up upon this uh, in the next stages. So the strat properties uh, here, we um, one personal advantage I think on, on flow here is that it allows you to visualize and plan accordingly your construction sequence because you, you explicitly tell uh, the software when when are you going uh, when are you going to be inputting each of the different elements when are they going to be getting out in the different stages in which nodes we are going to be applying them if there's a pre-stress and the stiffness of the relevant uh, uh, retaining system which can be your ground anchor uh, or it can be soil nails at which angle you're inputting them or if they are imposing any um, moments on the structure uh, you can also give it a liver arm and for that Again, we are going to bring that in. Table. 
notice I'm clicking in here on the on the top left, so then we can just do the control control V usual. Um, you would copy and paste in different uh, Windows applications, or you can just uh, uh, do right click and then also paste. And in here we can see um, uh, those elements that for now uh, they, they are not in the stages that have been created yet, so it will be populated afterwards. So next thing we want to be looking at is the surcharges. And we are going to have some planned surcharges uh, coming in and out uh, on different stages on the model. So we are adding the, those right now. As you can see, then we can paste and get those recognition. Wall loads, uh, we're not going to be using them in this particular model. And then we come into the partial factors. So as uh, Cicero has explained earlier, uh, we support uh, through supports various codes uh, internationally and uh, uh, as well as your own customized uh, choices. So in the direct KPI, which is the one I'm going to be using at the moment, um, we are going to be inputting those factors. And you can just populate it. In this case, we, we go for a choice of just one and one, so that could, should come give should give us back the results as if it was an SLS um, scenario and just uh, it will be just a show of, of validating that particular case. It's doing what is expected and then we come to a point in which uh, we can uh, start adding the data for stages and first of all and before moving forward you can see that there's no data for the wall as of yet and that's because we can only introduce the wall from the net from the following stage so the last but not least is the water data and we are just going to uh, introduce the values of the existing water table of our model uh, in in here on both sides of the wall uh, you can see now it has appeared on the right hand side uh, um, in sorry in the left hand side on, on on the on the image and then we need to do the same on the right hand side and the advantage of doing this uh, uh, on the original stages also is because it propagates through the construction sequence and it's something we can amend then manually as, as we move on so we are just going to copy again in here and as you can see now we have our uh, full initial condition with all the materials existing ground level and the groundwater. Now, in here, uh, there's the option um, of the stages three, in which we are going to be able to just going to show. Sorry, before we go there, uh, you can drop down here if you lose any of the tabs because you have opened like myself now uh, plenty of them. So you can recover the one you're interested in uh, just by going through here on, 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 on the different panes. So I'm just going to close a few of them and then just go back to where we need to be. Stages. Now, again, click and drag down so we can keep this on one side and just so we can keep track of what we are doing. And this is the, our existing initial condition. So through those two buttons in here, we can add or delete stages at our uh, leisure and we need to uh, start including the new stages uh, so we can include the effect of the wall, the plant loading and the different stages of excavation. So the next stage is going to be the wall installation. We can give it a title just for the sake of it. And we can choose if we had more stages in here, uh, where do we want to insert it and after which stage? It's again very useful. And if we open these collapsible drop down menus, you can see that nothing has changed from the initial condition. So uh, to amend that, what we are going to first do is go to wall data. And what you're going to see is that um, this has been added in, in here. We bring it to the other side. And now, as opposed to the nodes that we had on the left and on the right hand side, we also have the stiffness of the wall because now it's been included. If we move to the previous stage through the useful buttons up here, you can see that there's no effect of the wall. And we move on and we can bring in the, um, yeah, the stiffness that we have assumed for our uh, our particular wall. And again, it is as simple as, as copying it or entering it manually. Again, it saves time if you've got it uh, pre-existingly populated. There we go. So now you can see that the wall has been uh, 
shown by this uh, round rectangle around the, the various nodes. Right, so that's all we need to do on that stage. And then what we do is uh, we move to the second stage in which we are going to start introducing um, the application of plant loading on the active side. And a bit of excavation on the on the right hand side of the of the model. And that's the way it shows. And because we had already uh, preempted those um, those fields on, on the loading and on the struts, we can start seeing how they are being populated on the different stages. So now uh, we, we can uh, easily start removing some of the materials on the right hand side. As you can see, it will start coming down. We can do this for a few of them. And I'm just going to leave uh, enough cover. So there's about a meter of uh, material on top of the existing ground level before we proceed to any dewatering or the installation of the uh, temporary props. We can then add more stages from here in which we are going to apply the pre-stress on, on that ground anchor, which is our uh, temporary solution for this particular excavation. You can see how it now it's been recognized, just getting back to the model as in, in the struts, because it's entering in our in our model at this stage and exiting on, on number six, because it changes the properties in them. Yeah. So the next thing we do is at a subsequent stage, where we uh, apply not only the pre-stress on that anchor, but now we are going to apply the stiffness of the of the temporary prop. Just do that. And there's an overlap on those because the two are acting on the same in the same place. And the next thing we do is going to proceed to, to the full excavation and uh, then we will be applying uh, in the subsequent stages um, further changes. Again, uh, you can when you open and you query here, you can see the elements that have been changing from the different st uh, uh, the different stages and just to keep track of, of what we've been doing on onto the model. So to add to the next stage, this is a full excavation. To 40.5 MOD. And in here, what we are going to be doing now is just recovering the node levels, just bring them back, and it's a matter of just unselecting the different layers until we reach the desired level, which that's the one. And as um, having that visual aid on the side, we can also see that that the ground water level is not where we need it for for the model, so we just need to bring it, drain it back through water data and we need to be it on the right hand side and we just bring it down to 39 and a half. So a meter below. And in here it also, um, for example, just thinking on EC7, for example, it gives us the opportunity to experiment on bringing down to uh, the, the effects of uh, over excavation, for example, that uh, 0.5 uh, up to 5, 0.5 uh, meters or 10% of the retained height of the wall. So next thing is going to create an additional stage. And in this one, we are going to add the roof and the basement slabs, uh, the effect of those uh, permanent uh, prop systems. As you can see, those temporary props have now been uh, substituted by the the top and the base, and also there's an extra sort of charge that has been accounted uh, on on the material on on the passive side, on the retained side, on, on the excavated side. A further stage uh, to remove the plant loading uh, after all operations have have finalized. 
would happen in, in the construction sequence, and you can see now that has disappeared. And then we can edit. Um, yeah, my spelling is not great, so uh, uh, we can just insert there. We can customize that. And just is fully editable, as you can see. And we add a final stage. Where we are going to apply that reduction in the stiffness of the structural elements. So we can call it the long term foundation, for example. And we'll see that those um, strut properties, uh, once we are in stage eight, uh, they they have significantly reduced by uh, fifty percent. But now, what do we need to make sure is that we want to do the same with the wall. So we open the wall data, and we see that our stiffness is exactly the same as it was uh, on the previous stages, as 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 normally expected. Then what we do is go to the analysis method. We can bring it back. And in here we can apply a, a wall relaxation. In which we can. Just bring it down, so click and drag. Remember that is very, very useful that, that tip in there. So the wall relaxation for that particular stage, we want to um, reduce by a certain amount that it's been given to us by our um, structural colleagues, for example, and we just bring it down by 20% and you see it's automatically done on for you. So we'll in, in line with the with the other structural elements, we are going to bring it down to 50% and you can see that that has been reduced. So now uh, with all those ingredients in place, uh, we only have uh, one more thing to do, which is uh, run our analysis. So I'm just going to switch off the rest of the tabs to make space. And we just do analyze our model. So you can see it runs really, really quickly. We save the model for good measure. And uh, we are presented uh, in, in, in our output now. So in the gateway, we can access the tabular output, the result summary and the graphical output. So all these three options in here, uh, we can uh, just uh, go one by one and we'll see the different uh, components. And one particular thing uh, that I love from through is the transparency of the output. Uh, looking at all the data, all the worth of data has been declared for all the stages, um, the results envelope at the end, the strat forces uh, per stage at the different nodes. It's very accessible, so you are in control of what you're doing at any time. Then in here uh, we can select in between the two runs um, and, and because we, we selected the unfactored analysis as well. You can select if you want the summary or the full. Or the full output, uh, which shows you both sides of the wall. And all of these can be exported uh, easily through uh, the main menu on the top left. So clicking on the logo, uh, we can export the material and we can export it in CSV. And then all those tables get get shown at, uh, and you can access them so you can create your, your own plots. Uh, then result summary is a reduced version of the of the full output and again very useful because it gives you just in one screenshot uh, those results on both analysis of the envelope so you can spot quickly what are your minimum uh, and max maximum um, let's say actions on on your wall in terms of displacements uh, the shear and also the bending moments so you can quickly see what's going to be the critical sections or the critical nodes and which is the, the dominant uh, dominant factors. And if we are to go uh, to the graphical output per se, we can at this moment in, we can close graphical input just to show it. We've got up in here um, the print selection. This saves us time so we don't need to go through one by one uh, on the output and it creates uh, both for the tabular and also for the graphical output um, the printout uh, in PDF in this case. Uh, of all the images uh, of all the sequence, which you, we could go backwards um, with our previous and next uh, images, and we can click on the different uh, on the different bits on um, on the graphical output. Having that graphical output, just forgot to say this, very important. Uh, it gets activated on 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 the ribbon. Uh, all the set of options that we've got uh, to control how uh, this can be 
later on brought to a PDF or, or outside uh, through for reporting for your clients. Uh, you can unzoom or zoom save in, 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 in WMF um, format. You can set the scales. Um, this one is best fit for you for your current screen, but you can uh, have different um, uh, scaling options. Um, it can be user specified engineering and colors um, also uh, ca catering for, um, yeah, for, for for everyone. Um, if, if we've got some sens sensitivity on, on, on color blind colleagues, so there's there's these options where we can change the lines that have been plotted and also um, uh, for finding those higher contrast uh, combinations and we can access in here the different colors of the different materials as well. So we can check on the displacements, we can check on the effective pressures, the bending, uh, we can check on shears and then obviously we can also check on the envelope and that that would not change. That would be the, yeah, the envelope for the whole for whole stages. So Yes, I think that uh, concludes uh, this this part. I'm just going to well, of the live demo. Hope you found that useful. And I'm just going now to and save for good measure, close here and re regain the presentation. Let's give it a second. We are going to go uh, directly to, to the case study. So, uh, yes, now we are going to be looking into a particular case study that was used of, uh, uh, a few of the OASIS tools, including FRU, which is the, the matter of, of the current webinar. These are a project, uh, is the University College Hospital Macmillan Cancer, Cent Cancer, Cancer Center and was completed a few years back. And through was utilized to assess the potential impact on the foundations of adjacent buildings uh, during the excavation stages for a new basement. And this depicts uh, one of those many potential uses of through in your in your uh, real life projects. And in this particular case is the design of propped excavations in heavily congested urban sites. So. Um, the, in particular, uh, in this project, uh, it's highlighted in in red uh, in the middle. That was going to be the location of the new uh, of the new um, cancer center, uh, cancer research center. So a section of the proposed retaining wall was run into that to create a basement for the new building. Uh, was running alongside uh, alongside the Rain Institute, and that imposed several restrictions. Uh, of course, due to the that proximity, uh, the originally envisaged piles uh, had to be reduced in diameter. And as you can see, there was as much as 600 millimeters between center of the piles and uh, and the existing building. And it was of interest to understand uh, what was going to be the impact of the new build uh, on on the foundations of of the existing um, uh, rain institute. So. Uh, for the majority of the site, it was proposed to construct uh, um, um, a combination of hard soft uh, 600 millimeter diameter board second pile wall with male piles at 750 millimeter diameter centers and along that section that was in proximity of the rain institute a smaller piles were uh, proposed to be used and that required uh, the wall to be tem temporarily propped uh, at two different levels. So the effects of the movements on the Red Institute piles uh, due to the excavation in front of the second pile wall were assessed in an iterative manner uh, using various uh, various tools uh, of the o OASIS Geo Suite and structural uh, suites of, of software. So FLU was utilized to understand the, the, the horizontal ground movements, also the, the, the soil uh, stress profile at the back of the wall, also the front of the wall, and see how that would uh, potentially impact those foundations. But then ALP and PILE um, uh, were used, um, uh, the, the output from FLU was used in, as an input in those two tools, what, which what they do is deal with the analysis of laterally and axially uh, loaded piles, um, uh, respectively. And in turn, Alpen Pile uh, use the uh, the piles. Uh, sorry, the outputs from those two tools would be used uh, to size the necessary reinforcement within ADSEC. And this workflow led to the successful uh, design and completion and the construction of, of the of the research center and the basement on, and the new building. So that concludes uh, uh, our webinar. 
today brings it to a closure. So uh, this should have given you an appreciation of the analysis methodology that is uh, um, happening within FRU to understand better how to apply and model uh, a wide variety um, modeling effects. Uh, we've not touched in, in quite a few other packages and we'll be looking that uh, there's there's a, a existing available material uh, for that on, on the website and also in some videos in on YouTube channel. And then also to understand the capabilities of FRU uh, through um, its application in a in a real uh, case study. And yes, uh, pencil in uh, if you can. Um, we in a couple of weeks time we will be presenting again uh, on on FRU, but in this case will be uh, more advanced options, uh, some tips and tricks, and also some how can you use uh, FRU efficiently in your workflows uh, through the com automation capabilities. And just to finalize with an other uh, nice image uh, for those who like basements in very, very congested areas, this uh, corresponds to another Arab project, uh, which is the Leicester Square uh, Hotel. And that's that's it from us. So thanks for your attention. And now it's time for any questions that you might have. And for all of those who are Star, uh, Star Wars fans in the audience, uh, may the force be with you. So thanks. Yes, I, I guess you can't uh, finish the webinar without without that kind of joke on this day. <laughs> um, OK, so we did receive several questions. Um, if we just start with the first one, can traffic loads be modeled in Oasis Throw? Um, so I'll, I'll uh, answer that one if you like, Norbert. It's Carol here. Sure. Um, yeah, there are a couple of ways of modeling traffic loading. So if you want to model the load directly um, from, say, axles of, of plant or, or something like that, you can apply um, vertical surcharges to one side of the wall. Um, and the surcharges can either be UDLs, but for, for things like traffic loading, it's more likely to be a, a discrete load with an offset from the wall center and a load width and then the, you, you add the load magnitude. Um, so there's a table which allows you to input that. Alternatively, if you want to directly model, um, the way those, those vertical loads are applied to the wall is explained in quite a bit of detail in the manual. If you want to model loads on the wall directly, that's also possible since I think through 19.4 or thereabouts. And that can model um, trapezium shaped loads applied directly to the wall. So that, that those are the, the two alternatives. Great, that's great. Thank you, Carol. Um, so the next one is one of the questions that has been sent to us from attendee uh, registrants who couldn't attend. Um, how does fruit treat or analyze pore water pressures mm. in drained and undrained analysis? OK, um, so in drained analysis, as you would expect, the the total pressure is the sum of effective stress and pore pressure. Um, in undrained materials, there are two options. You can um, ask through to calculate pore pressures in undrained materials, and it'll do that via a, um, a stress pass method, taking into account the, the shape of the failure envelope and for the for the specific material. There's Again, quite a bit of detail on that in the manual. If you do that, then any input pore pressures for that material are ignored and the program will calculate its own. Um, if you want to use your um, user defined pore pressures for whatever reason, you should bear in mind that um, the total stresses reported by FRU will be correct, but the the sort of split between effective stress and pore pressure may not be accurate because obviously your user input um, pore pressures might not reflect the the undrained response of the material. So that's probably the difference that that you need to understand there. Okay, um, let's see another one um, from Peter Debney. Uh, what can we do with through um, com AB? from API and can we create new models and edit optimize existing ones? 
Um, yes, certainly that, that's exactly what the API is in, intended for. So originally we, we wrote the API so that you could um, run a lot of analyses quickly by editing existing models. But now that we've added the JSON file IO, um, it's easier to create a model from scratch using the JSON format and then amend those properties. So we've got examples issued with the program which show how to use the API from um, VBA and Python, for example. They, they seem to be the most common um, ways that, that people interact with the API. And actually on that note, um, for our next free webinar, which um, Raul has mentioned, uh, we will cover some of the, um, what you can do with a common interface in Fruit. Um, and then from uh, another one from Mike Crilly, um, in the live example, the anchor was stressed and given a stiffness in two separate stages. Is it necessary to do this or can both be done in a single stage? I think it depends on the, the way your your anchor is being installed, whether it gets locked off at a particular stage. Um, that might be one that Raoul knows a bit more about. You can yes, certainly uh, apply, you can apply a pre-stress, I think, to an anchor. Um, or you can split the, the two operations, yeah. Really yeah, it, it depends as, as you say, Carol. No, it depends on the construction sequence, and, and and it needs to reflect what you what you're doing on site and how how much time you're going. To, I mean, if you're going to allow, yeah, the, the, the enough time to to this to the soil to react to to those stresses. I mean, my understanding also, what correct me if I'm wrong, Carol, is that uh, it's additive. So um, I mean, the the effect should not be that different, but um, a in the in in bit if if you create um yeah those those two effects uh, at the same time um but it's maybe just to to try to replicate more that uh, mm. that construction sequence mm. as, as as specified on on yeah on on, on your design Great. Um, and then moving on to the next one, how does Fru deal with material soil properties mm. at areas between nodes? I think this was on one of the <clears throat> one of Cecilia's slides. Yes, the the soil properties change halfway between nodes, so that's where the automatic node generation is quite helpful because you don't have to try and figure that out manually. Um, the program will do that automatically for you. Okay, and then the last one is how is analysis by Mindly method uh, different from Safe method? Um, yeah, they're, they're fairly similar. The Mindlin method uses an integrated form of Mindlin's equations, which were developed um, quite a long time ago. So they're sort of classical, uh, more or less closed form solutions. Um, it takes into account the wall plan length. So it's a, a slightly different method. There's a bit of discussion in this whole section in the manual called something like detailed processes in FRU and that gives you a <clears throat> an idea of the relative accuracy of the different methods for um, various soil stiffness profiles. So yeah it's useful to, to look at that because the Midland method is accurate for a specific stiffness profile and as you move away from that it, it becomes slightly less accurate. So I think the most the method that most people use is the FE um, type method. Yeah. OK, brilliant. Well, thank you for that. And with that, um, if anyone else has any questions, um, you can still drop them in the in the chat box. If not, then I would like to thank all of our presenters and our technical team for, um, for a great job. And again, do, we, uh, do take note that we do uh, have another webinar on the 18th of May, and that's going to basically cover a bit more about the common interface and additional features in FRU. And with that, I would like to thank everyone for your time and hopefully see you soon. Thank you.